Hey, I'm slacking pretty badly when it comes to making and uploading videos lately, and I apologize. Work has been keeping me pretty busy lately, so yeah. Good news is that I've been working on the Coda videos little by little, and those should be coming up pretty soon. To make up for this though, I figured I uh, should probably make a quick vlog to bridge the gap. First things first, a guy in our car group hosted a party for us. We had a huge turnout and even had a mobile beer van with several taps show up. That was pretty awesome. We had our usual gamut of cars along with a few outliers. The host of the party pulled his GT40 out, and uh, as well as his Diablo. Another guy brought his wife's Dino out, and my friend brought his Esprit out too. It's gotta be one of my favorite cars in the group, especially in that color. I love when we do parties at his house though. His neighborhood, especially with his specific house location, it just works perfectly for this. There's plenty of parking without too many of the cars needing to park in front of his neighbor's houses. I'm sure this will be first of many to come this year. Speaking of parties, we had another one a week apart from this. Our friend owns a shop nearby and wanted to host a party at his shop so we could see the facilities while enjoying some catered barbecue and free beer on tap on his uh, kegerator. He also had a hot tub in the shop. Yep, you heard correctly, hot tub in the shop, but nobody got in. Um, it was in the 50s and so definitely not gonna happen with those chilly temperatures. Lots of people showed up though and uh, we had a great time. What a neat shop. Hopefully get some business out of the deal. I finally got around to swapping the winter tires off of the M235i. I'll probably get one more season out of the rear tires, if that, but that's it. They're really worn down, as you can see. Sucks, but the fronts look brand new, so I'll just have to replace the rear too. Not great, but you know, it's better than having to replace all four. I just can't seem to keep my foot out of the go pedal. Oops. I completely forgot how uh, crazy sharp the summer tires feel compared to the sloppy sidewalls of the uh, winter tires. But yeah, just made me excited to go drive. Speaking of tires, I went to run some errands in the R8 yesterday and took a scenic route home through some nice neighborhoods. One which has a really small tunnel that goes under the highway. It was about 60 degrees out and sunny and I just couldn't miss the opportunity to go for a quick cruise. Figured I'd go to Smoothie King and get a smoothie and then take a long scenic route home, but immediately after exiting that tunnel in the neighborhood, I hit a pothole. It's always bumpy under that tunnel, but this was a really long, brutal winter that really tore the roads up, and any potholes that were there were made much worse. I obviously had the windows down so I could hear the exhaust and enjoy the fresh air, and as soon as I hit the pothole, I immediately started hearing hissing sounds. Before I could even comprehend what happened, uh, the car did its usual really loud beep and warning message about tire losing pressure, thankfully. And I always have the uh, tire pressures and temperatures up on the instrument cluster, so I can immediately see the number dropping, and it went from green to yellow. The road went through the neighborhood, but uh, despite being in a neighborhood, it's still fairly trafficked, so I immediately uh, turned off onto one of the side streets when I noticed that uh, the, the numbers are dropping way too quickly to even have a chance of making it home. So I just found a nice safe spot in front of one of the houses on a side street. Much less likely to get sideswiped that way. I got out and was just hoping maybe the bump knocked the valve stem nut loose or something, but yeah, no such luck. Huge gash in the sidewall. Now I have basically had no option but to flatbed it. Luckily I live down the street from Discount Tire and was stranded just a few blocks away. The tow company I use is one that a lot of the supercar guys in town use as most of them carry boards or ramps with them. Of course the one guy that shows up <laughs> to get my car didn't have ramps, but the boards he had were just enough to get my car up. I had just enough tread to do one more track day probably, but this was a good enough reason I guess just to replace them all. Had him tow me to the Discount Tire parking lot and just left it there overnight. And then in the morning I went back, it was actually this morning, and had him put PS4S tires on. I did keep the three good tires, so if this ever happens again, I can just, you know, Uber home and then come back with the daily, <laughs> put the car on jack stands, take the wheel off, go to a tire shop, have them put one of the old tires on. That way I can actually get the car back to the safety of my garage instead of leaving it overnight in a dark parking lot uh, on a week where there's severe thunderstorms. Luckily there wasn't any hail or any issues, but yeah, it just wasn't ideal. Now the issue though is that, um, it's a space. Since I already have a set of winter tires and now I have three giant wide supercar tires sitting in the garage, um, I'm definitely going to have to get some tire racks to put on the wall for storage. So I had a track day at Hastings scheduled, but it got canceled because they had snow in the forecast. Lots of the guys I was going with switched to Heartland Park instead the following week with uh, PCA. 
I was wanting to go, but the R8 just got a low oil light, and in my head, I thought I just got the oil change recently, like within a thousand miles, but um, I called the dealership and they said it's actually been 4,000 miles since I'd done it in nearly a year, so apparently time flies for me. Uh, and you know, it was just weird because I, I padded in there really recently for that radiator leak, and I thought they would have checked the fluids since it was in there, but apparently they don't do that. Anyway, um, on the phone, the dealership said it's not a big deal, just add a quart of oil and... No biggie. So that's what I did. I added a quart of the oil that I recommended and it was good to go. No more oil light, no more beep when I started up. And I don't know, feels good to finally have it back to having zero air lights on the instrument cluster. So I decided against the track day since oil light issue, but uh, Friday I went out to help my friend. PCA, I guess, was recording a promo video with my friend's GT3 RS, along with some other spec race cars and such. And they needed a guy who knew the track to drive the camera car, and I was more than happy to help, so I went out there and did that. And then after hanging out with all my friends out there who were tracking, I got pretty jealous that I was sitting at home and they were getting to track their cars, so decided to see if PCA would let me just sign up for Sunday, the last day of the track weekend, and luckily they were nice enough to oblige. So basically I went home, bled the brakes, got the crap ready, and then I set off early, early Sunday morning. And I only got two sessions in since it started raining while we were out at lunch, but I still managed to shave three seconds off of my best lap from last year. So I'm pretty happy about that. Got a 152. For reference, my buddy with a Gen 5 Viper got 149, and my friend with a C7Z got 147. They've been driving for decades and are better drivers than me, but I think even with equal skill, I probably couldn't match their times. Their cars have over 100 horsepower and more power, less weight, and much, much wider tires. And I'm running regular street tires, and they're running Cup 2s. I don't think even with Cup 2s, though, in a perfect lap, that I'd be able to do much more than about a 150. I think 149 would be pretty hard. But who knows? That's my goal. Due to how Harry's lap timer exports videos, though, uh, I start at half a lap early and end it half a lap after. That ensures that the overlay is there for the entire flying lap. The lap will be the video immediately after this one, and so you should be able to immediately watch it. I'll publish both at the same time. And keep your eyes peeled for the Coda videos uh, really soon. See ya!